This is a story of a woman named Wendy. She grew up on a small farm in the country. Wendy and her father grew pumpkins, tomatoes, berries, and sunflowers. They had a peaceful and happy life. Overall, life on the farm was pretty uneventful, except for the occasional stray slime looking to smash some crops. However, recently, strong winds have started gusting through the land. More and more monsters started invading their farm and destroying the crops. Even with these additional challenges, they were still able to get by. Until one night, the moon turned blood red, and a giant nautilus attacked and destroyed their farm. Fortunately, Wendy and her father managed to escape and brought a few belongings. Now that their home had become unsafe, they knew it was time to start over. Wendy's father had been injured during the attack, so it was up to her to gather the supplies to rebuild. Among the supplies that they had was her father's old short sword and an armor vanity set from when he served in the Knight's Guard years ago. They had lost so much in just one night. As she picked up the old sword, she realized her life would never be the same. This is the story of Wendy the Warrior. Welcome back. This is Rito here with our first episode of Wendy the Warrior. This is going to be a Terraria 1.4 Master Mode Let's Play. We are on Classic and not Journey Mode, and we have a medium-sized Crimson World right here. You see the slimes are extremely strong, so we've already got some threats here. This is Wendy the Warrior, so we're going to be doing a melee class, and we've got our guide. And in the storyline of Wendy, the guide is her dad, and they got kicked off their farm by the scary Nautilus during the Blood Moon. And now they're a little bit homeless, but not for long since we're going to chop down some trees and build a house. There's all sorts of NPCs all around this world who are in danger due to all the things that have been put in motion. And if any of you have watched the Calamity Let's Play with Magnus the Mage, you'll know that he did some pretty awesome things and also some pretty bad things towards the end of his playthrough. And he put certain things in motion in the world. And that's kind of how we've built the storyline around the changes that have occurred during 1.4. So even though she doesn't know who Magnus is and Magnus doesn't know who Wendy is, the effects of what Magnus did in his world are kind of rippling across the lands. And so she's just one of the many people who has been affected. And so we're going to follow the storyline of Wendy and her father. And yeah, I think this is going to be an amazing adventure. I'm so excited to start this off. There's a couple things I wanted to mention right off the bat. First off, I like to do kind of a vanity thing for my characters. It gives them more of a personality. So you'll notice I've got Hollowed Armor, Hollowed Greaves, and the Squire Shield all painted sky blue and silver. And these are all in the vanity slots, and I'm not going to switch them over to the other slots. I'm going to leave them as vanity so they won't affect our stats in any way, but it does give her such an amazing look in my opinion. This is actually the first time I've started playing an actual 1.4 playthrough. And so this is so nice to finally be starting a new character and seeing the world from the start. Already the threat of the slimes is growing. We've got to <laughs> dodge some slimes here. Oh, these flowers are so beautiful and they move when you walk past them. I really love the changes that they've made so far. So let's craft a few torches and start lighting up this tunnel. This is such a pretty tunnel, the way they do the uh, flowers and everything like that. Ooh, and we have our first treasure chest. We have this, which gives us vine ropes. Nice. That's our first accessory, so we'll definitely take that. Ooh, and another treasure chest. Um, let's keep these, because we'll be able to use those for storage. We got an umbrella. That's quite helpful at the beginning of the game. And we have rope. So let's organize our inventory a little bit. Uh, ooh, we have healing potions. That's also really nice. Perfect, and we have 10 recalls already, so we're getting a lot of stuff right off the bat here. I always love finding a quick tunnel. Give us a few things. And we've got a slime there with a potion. Hmm, let's jump down and get this treasure chest. And give ourselves some light here. We really need to get a new sword. Uh-oh. Okay, we, we do have a potion. All 
Okay, we can get around this guy. And let's just run. There's no point in fighting the slimes with the weapons we've got right now. Let's craft a workbench. And let's put that down, see what we can craft really quick. So it looks like we can craft a few things already. So let's craft some wooden armor. That's always a good thing to have right at the beginning. Give ourselves some defense. And then let's grab a wooden sword. Looks like we can already craft a lead anvil. So let's do that. And we'll mark that as a favorite. We can craft a wooden hammer, wood sword. And we got a pointy wood sword. So that's better than our copper short sword, I think. Excellent. So we don't have too much, but we do have one upgrade. And I think it might actually be good to head down a little bit farther now that we have a weapon. And let's see if we can get any other stuff. We're going to have to be super careful because I don't want to die too much, but I know that'll probably happen. I think it's going to be pretty inevitable here. I'm going to call her a warrior because I think that's going to be the main thing that we focus on. Ooh, we got a pressure plate right there. Saved ourselves from a trap. But we probably will also try doing some summons as well throughout this playthrough. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it'd be fun. Not anything serious, but, you know, like have a summon like one or two, just kind of more as like a familiar or like a pet or something like that. Ooh, and we have a heart crystal. Let's use that. Perfect. Get some extra health here. I want to try doing a little bit of summons, but we could also do just a pure melee class. So let me know in the comments what you think. Let's grab some of this gold. The main thing I want to do is craft like a gold or a tungsten sword. And I'm not really going to go for the gold or tungsten armor, most likely. It depends. We'll have to see. So this is the first time I've played the game non-modded for probably like three years. So I'm pretty excited to see how this goes. I'm out of torches, but we do have this chandelier. So if we pick it up and put it back down, it will act as a torch. And that chest had one of these shoes, guarding spike shoes. So that's awesome as well. Ooh, and we have a keg. So we can craft some ale. And more cobwebs is always good. If we can find a loom or craft a loom. This digger guy is taking a long time to come up closer to us. So let's keep on exploring. See what we can find over here. Ooh, we've almost got him. Man, they have a lot of health in master mode. So one thing I like to do is throw these rope coils instead of just putting down rope. It makes it a little bit faster early game. We're starting to get a little bit dangerous here with all of the enemies that are spawning. So we might need to do some quick movements and dodge or even teleport back to base. There's probably too many slimes down here with how much health each of these have. Let's go back to base and it's probably nighttime, so we're going to need to put up some walls really quick. But this is fine. We'll do our first little base right now. So now let's put down a workbench, some torches. And what I want to do with this playthrough with Magnus, I had already prepared a really awesome base before the start of that playthrough. And that's the tower that you've seen in all of the different showcase videos and everything. But for this, I wanted to... Oh no, the owl got killed by the demon eye. <laughs> so rude. Um, but for this playthrough, I don't have a base prepared or anything. Um, I haven't really had time to work on a base. Been quite busy making showcase videos for the 1.4 update. But what I want to do instead is do more building as we go in this playthrough and just have little tiny builds all across the world. And I feel like 1.4 is really supportive of that type of playstyle. Ooh, I love this block swap ability. This is so nice. We don't have to break the floor in order to put down wood floors. In between episodes, I might do a little build and then maybe put like a time lapse of it or just show it at the start of the episode. Let me know if you want me to just include it in the middle of the episode or just do it in between. I'm kind of favoring the in between because it can take quite a while to build a little house or something like that. So I'll see what we end up doing there. It looks so dangerous outside. We've got three zombies and three demon eyes. And how much do these guys have? 114 health and the demon eyes have 180. And I know my weapon doesn't do much damage, so I think we would die pretty quickly if we went out there. 
but I'll take this time to organize our inventory, maybe craft a few more things. Like we can do a furnace here and we can convert some of our ore. We can craft a lead broadsword and all that requires is eight lead bars. So let's do that. That's a good upgrade. We got a superior lead broadsword and that's got 12 melee damage and our wooden sword has eight. So we can toss our wooden sword and we're not gonna toss our copper sword because that is an amazing item for a recipe later on. And I think y'all know what I'm talking about. Whoa, <laughs> I was just organizing my inventory and a falling star went down and killed one of the uh, zombies there. That was awesome. I think what I'll do is I'll just start digging while we wait for the night to finish. Ooh, it could be nice to go out and grab those stars really quick. We're gonna need to be fast. And then we can put down our wall again. Perfect. And then I also wanted to put a campfire down and that will help us with our life regen whenever we're at base. We can craft some lead bars and then we should be able to craft a chain. And with a chain, we should be able to craft a sawmill. We can craft a loom. So let's do that. And we can now use our cobwebs and turn them into white string and see if we can get a good roll. <laughs> Of course, we got brisk and fleeting. We'll try that a little bit more when we have some more cobwebs. The night is finished. It just turned to day. So let's put a door on this house and let's head out adventuring. And yeah, we're good to go. We, we got some exploring to do. Maybe this time let's go to the left of our base and see what we find. There's a couple things I wanted to mention. Um, first of all, welcome to everybody new to the channel. I know that there's been a lot of people who have subscribed since 1.4 has been released. So thank you for subscribing, first of all, and um, welcome. I hope you enjoy the channel. I also do Let's Plays, not just uh, showcase videos. So I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these and having a good time with Let's Play videos. Um, also, for those who are new, we do have a Discord channel. The Discord channel is run by the very generic username and he does a great job with the channel. So be sure to check it out if you're interested. I jump in there from time to time as well and it's a lot of fun hanging out in Discord. So I've got a link in the description of the video if you wanna take a look. We've hit some pretty amazing milestones since 1.4 was released. We hit the 10,000 subscriber mark, and then we also hit our 20,000 subscriber mark, hopefully by the time this video is released. So I definitely wanna do a special video celebrating those milestones. What I'm thinking of doing is a Q&A video. I think that would be a lot of fun. So if you've got any questions for me, you can be questions about pretty much anything and everything. Um, put them in the comments below or put them on the Discord and I will look through all of the questions and answer as many as I can. That will be coming out soon, so keep a lookout for the Q&A and have fun with the questions. I'm excited to see what y'all decide to ask. With the Magnus series, it was a lot of kind of larger than life storylines and killing gods and defeating cosmic beasts and things like that. And I think with Wendy, I wanna have things be just a little bit more on a smaller scale, kind of back to, oh yes, we got a mace. I'm excited, haha, <laughs> yes. Okay, it's 18 damage versus 12 damage from our weapon. That's a really good upgrade. And it does a cool spin attack. Yes, she looks so cool with this mace. So with this playthrough, I want the storyline to be a little bit different, just kind of a change of pace from Magnus. And I think it'll be a fun change. You know, she starts on a farm and she's kind of just more of an everyday person. She's just trying to do her best with the different things that have kind of happened to her world. And she's just trying to survive. Oh, we got another mace, that's fun. Yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes and we'll definitely have some fun with, oh no, is this gonna be our first death? We gotta run, we gotta run. We gotta run. Uh-oh. I'm not dying to you today, buddy. <laughs> Take that. Oh my gosh, that was so close. I thought for sure I was gonna die there. Okay, let's try to break this dynamite. Yep. Okay, so we won't blow ourselves up now. That's the most important thing. So we'll just mine some gold while we wait for the potion to cool down so we can heal up again. It is always very tricky in the early game not to die too much, but it's kind of a fun challenge as well. 
With Magnus, we had kind of a driving force behind all of the story right from the get-go. And with Wendy, really the only thing that's happened is that she lost her house and she's trying to survive, you know? It's not like she has to defeat Supreme Calamitous and that's kind of her number one objective from the get-go. It's more of trying to help the other people in the world who have suffered similar sort of unfortunate things like she has. And yeah, so she's a little bit more of just trying to be a helper. And I like that. So I'm excited to see where Wendy goes in her journeys. Okay, all the red slimes are down there. So let's put some platforms over here and see if we can kill the slimes. Uh-oh. Yeah, I'm running away. <laughs> no, thank you. I'm not ready to die right now. So one thing I can do is put some platforms across and this will help us a little bit. We can maybe check out up here and see if there's a different mine shaft with less enemies. And I think this will be better because there were too many slimes down there and they just kept accumulating. And let's do another rope coil, throw that right there and we're good to go. One of the strategies I learned when we did our death mode Magnus series at the beginning was a lot of times it's better just to not fight the enemies. You just run away, block them in, whatever you need to do, because they take a while to kill and it always is a risk. And it looks like we have a treasure chest right below us. So let's go check that out. This is weird that I've never seen a treasure chest outside of a little house. I don't know if that's something new to 1.4 or if that's just kind of a glitched spawn for a treasure chest, but it's got a menacing band of regeneration. That's great. So let's put that on. And we could drop our loom because we found a loom earlier and we could try crafting some uh, white string and see if we can get a good white string. And we just got menacing. That's pretty awesome. I may craft one or two more and see if we can get a warding one. Doesn't look like we got a warding one, but I'll go with menacing. Bump our damage just a little bit. I'm so glad we got this mace. This is helping so much right off the get-go. I would really like a spear, but I'll settle for a mace. Like I said earlier, it has been so long since I've played vanilla Terraria. Definitely let me know if there are some things I should be crafting early game um, or different items I need to keep a lookout for for the melee class. I'm always interested to see what the recommendations are from the viewers. Ooh, we have a trap right there. Let's be sure to break that before we mess up and run over it. Oh, we're on top of the little gold mine that we had stumbled upon earlier. So let's go ahead and on the map over here, we've got kind of a mine shaft to the left and let's go see where that leads. I'm glad I put that dirt down. Whenever you get stuck trying to fight a certain enemy early in the game, it's best to just block in the area because otherwise you're going to have a bunch of things coming up behind you. And of course he runs away right when I'm about to kill him. Let's drop a rope into this room. I don't ever like to go into a room when we're on a hard difficulty without a good way to escape and a good way to prevent fall damage. Plus it helps us get the cobwebs up there. And let's try to get a torch down as soon as we can. Okay, we got a torch. Good thing we got that guy mostly killed. So this looks like a good room. I think there's a, yep, there's a boulder trap right above us. So let's break that for sure. Oh, I think I see a treasure chest down there. Let's check it out. We have the armored inner tube. Yes. So the inner tube is a new item that grants the ability to float in water. That's great. I really like that for early game. Plus it gives us three defense. So now we're bumped up to eight defense. We've got another mine right here and we've got some amethysts up here. So let's get those first. I wanna to try to get a hook as soon as we can. Oh, this is so nice that we can just float. This is a, actually quite a good accessory. And then if you hold down, you can still go under the water and then you float right back up. So actually this is a really nice accessory. I'm very glad we got it. Ooh, and we have a skeleton. Oh, but it's the skeleton that throws stuff. Maybe if we're lucky, we can throw some bombs down and kill some of them. We should be able to kill this, the skeletons with one more bomb. Yeah, we got them. Okay, perfect. This has been a very productive mine. Oh yeah, we got a ton of emeralds too. Lots of gems in this area. 
And all we need is 15 and then we're good to go for a hook. One thing that's pretty awesome about master mode is it actually allows you to have six accessory slots, which is a really awesome change because then that means you have a max total of seven after you get your demon heart from the wall of flesh. Okay, we need to grab this heart before that skeleton gets to us. I don't think the skeleton will be able to reach us though, so excellent. And we have another heart crystal, so we're up to 140 health. Very good. And I think we're going to need a little something to get us out of the water there. Ooh, this is good. We can hit him through the wall right here. <laughs> this is a little bit of a cheese method to kill this guy, but might as well use it. Otherwise, that guy has been pretty scary. Man, I'm really glad we got this weapon. <laughs> this has been so helpful. I see three emeralds right below us, and we're at 12 emeralds, so we will have enough to form an emerald hook. So that's amazing. I love to get a hook in episode one. It's kind of the goal of this episode for me. Get a hook, get a couple weapon upgrades, and a few heart crystals. Now that we've got our gems, let's throw it on an anvil, and let's craft our hook right now. Sweet emerald hook. So once again, we've got a really big room, and I don't know how far it goes down, so I'm just going to drop as many of these as I need, and that was a lot, so I'm glad we did that. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, that was scary. Oh no, we've, we've got a salamander. Time to evacuate. <laughs> I do not want to fight a salamander right now. No, our first death. And we lost three gold. Oh man, that's a bummer. But I had a feeling going down into that big room was going to be the death of us. But it's actually pretty good because we have so much stuff we can craft in our base. It's probably best that we head back and start crafting. We've got tons of gold bars that we can craft. We can craft a gold pickaxe. We can craft a gold broadsword. So gold sword takes eight. So we should definitely do that. And that's a nice upgrade. And then we can also craft maybe a gold pickaxe and just get rid of our, oh, we have a broken copper pickaxe that we've been using. No wonder we've been digging slow. And let's see what else we can do. We still have enough gold to craft maybe like a helmet or some greaves. Let's go with a helmet. And now we've got 10 defense. So I crafted a few more strings and we managed to get one that's a guarding. I think at the early game, it's probably better just to use a defense boosting string instead of a menacing one, but we'll keep our menacing right here just in case we want to switch to that for like a boss fight or something and it looks like it's getting pretty dark so before it goes to night let's go grab another couple trees and get some wood uh oh i think it just turned to night so let's get this last tree and we can head back to base hopefully we will be able to dodge these slimes okay okay we got this grappling hook, get to base. We're safe back at our base and we got some zombies knocking on the door. I kind of want to say hi to them really quick. This might be a bad idea. Yeah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> I think we're going to leave them out there for tonight. And I think this is a good place to end the episode for today. We've got some pretty awesome upgrades. We've got a gold helmet. We've got some wood chest and wood legs. Got a few accessories here mainly the menacing band of regeneration and the inner tube. Those are pretty helpful. We also have our guardian white string. And then we've got our gold broadsword and our mace, which are very helpful. And we've got a few health upgrades. So lots of good stuff. And of course, we've got our hook. So many good things this first episode. And we managed not to get slaughtered during the first start of master mode. So I think we're off to a very good start with Wendy. I think this is going to be a really fun playthrough, so thank you all for tuning in on this episode. I also wanted to remind everybody about the Q&A for the 20,000 subscriber milestone. So if you've got any questions, be sure to put those in the comments below. 
and I will answer them in a separate video. So I hope you all have enjoyed the video and the start of this new adventure with Wendy the Warrior. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.